Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 32 and we have one of the most interesting fish in North, Amer in North America in my opinion. Um, many other people would disagree but morphologically this one's very unique especially in the freshwater world. Today we are talking about the bam, the pirate perch. Pirate perch, or scientific name Aphrododerus cyanus. Um, again, it's Aphrododerus cyanus. Um, it is part of the family Aphrododeridae. Um, as you can imagine, it's very unique. It's the only species in its family. Um, so, yeah, it's actually very, very. Hmm. It's more closely related to some cave fish than any other um, fish outside of caves. It's got some very unique characteristics. Um, now, this fish is found in central and um, central and eastern North America. Um, it used to be in Pennsylvania, but they've since been extirpated due to the effects of urbanization. And that's one of the biggest issues with this fish. I'm not going to say this fish is in trouble, but it could be in the future due to the creation of dams and the effects of urbanization that restrict this fish's ability to um, expand its range. Um, this is a small fish. Um, you're looking at about 14 centimeters, which is about five and a half inches. Um, that's about your max. You really only find these living up to four years. Um, usually it's less than four years, um, but four years is not out of the realm. As you can see though, for a small fish, it's really stout bodied, really thick, and it has this very, very, very large mouth um, as well compared to its body size. It usually has a dark brown coloration. Every one that I have found has this sort of purple gleam right here. They have this bar under the eye. And then they also, sometimes it's easier to see than others. You can't really tell on this one, but on this one you can see this darker band um, towards the base of the tail. Um, and that's pretty characteristic. However, we can talk about this for however long you want about other characteristics there is legitimately no way if you have this fish in your hand there is no way that you can confuse this fish with anything else in the world i don't care who you are what's your name the next the next characteristic should never get you confused and that is because of this. The cloaca, or the anus, the asshole, you know, for lack of a better word, um, the cloaca in the urogenital opening has migrated forward to be right, in fr right underneath the head, in front of the fins of everything, right below the gills. So that right there is the cloaca and the urogenital opening. So... Yeah, it has migrated from the back of the fish all the way in front. Kind of like we were talking last week about the halibut, how the eyes will shift um, to one side during growth. Same thing with this. So as a larva, it is, or as a very young fish, it's way in the back of the body, and then as they get older, it migrates forward. Well, as I, as they get older, very quickly. It's not, it's not like it reaches there when it's four years. It's within, I want it, relatively short time i can't really say the time period but because of that there is, should be no way that you confuse this fish with anything anything else in the world um these live in very densely vegetated areas and very sluggish waters um think swamps places with woody debris um especially with undercut banks that have a bunch of root masses um it's really common they are solitary, um, but I have found some records saying that they congregate to avoid predation. It's probably more young that do that. They seem to be relatively, um, relatively solitary. Um, 
they don't really need a lot of people, a uh, lot of fish around them to protect themselves. And we'll get into that in a minute. Um, it's one of the interesting facts about this fish. Um, now they are nocturnal. Noc they do have nocturnal feeding habits. They eat a lot of insects and a lot of small fish. They are very voracious predators. Um, they eat mosquito larvae a lot. They'll eat smaller fish. They're not a very big fish, so they can't exactly, you know, take on a largemouth bass. But they will eat any fish that they, basically any insect or fish that they feel they can swallow. Now. We have, their reproduction method is honestly one of the coolest things about them. Um, so, you know, you might be asking why. Why is the cloaca so far underneath the head? Um, and there's a couple of different reasons for it um, that I could think of. But one of the ways is their reproduction method. Originally, they were thought to be gill brooders because of that position. So basically the thought was, was that it they could, uh, the eggs and everything would go up into the gills and they'd hold the baby fish in their gills. But that didn't really work. Um, and a lot of people are confused because they're like, how can it hold, how can a female hold that many? Um, and they can't because they lay about 100 to 400 eggs. Um, and now we know that their reproduction is in the underwater root masses. Um, think, remember I said those undercut banks with um, very thick root masses? Um, hey, hold on, hold on. Gotcha. hey. Okay. Um, so, yes, those thick root masses. And what happens is the females um, will go into the burrow, into these root masses, and basically just ran their head right into the middle of those root masses as much as they can do. And then they deposit those eggs. And how they deposit them, and they the males release the sperm the same way, the eggs and sperm are actually transferred directly from the opening into the gill chamber. So basically they breathe in the eggs and they shoot them out into the root mass. And I'm not going to say it, it's not like a bullet, but they basically think like, um, for lack of a better term, they hawk a loogie. Like that's that's a, probably the best thing that I can describe it to. So then the so the females will do that, and then the males come in right behind, and then they do the thing, same thing with sperm. There is some evidence, not much, that the males actually just kind of stay in that burrow to make sure that those eggs are fertilized and another male doesn't come by and fertilize them after. So, um, the last very interesting fact, as you know, I really like to end these on a interesting fact. The last interesting fact I'm going to say is that um, these um, pirate perch are known, the, they are, Oh my goodness. Pirate perch are the only known animal to exhibit chemical camouflage. So, you know, we have camouflage patterns and, you know, other things that we have looked at, but the pirate perch is the only one that we know does some sort of chemical camouflage. So instead of pheromones trying to get other people, um, other other species of their oh my god other individuals of their species to find them they actually hide from predators in that way um so just think of that now these are you can get these in the aquarium um if you're in north america um they're a little difficult uh they're not that difficult um they do have some issues um, they aren't exactly the best aquarium fish unless you just enjoy having them because they are so nocturnal They are very secretive during the day. So you're not going to see a lot of them um, They're very cheap though. They're about ten dollars if you're in America um, So, you know, not that expensive like I said it could be in future trouble because of urbanization But they are not in trouble not right now but thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Thank you guys so much for 
all of this please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it um listen guys take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and peace